It's Monday. It's February 26th. And the word of the day is arse ropes, a word from the 14th century that means intestines. Oh, nice. Used in a sentence, the first recorded usage of arse ropes was in a translation of the Bible, and they're both full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think we should have stuck with that term. Explains my results a lot more accurately, there you know you what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright, and broadcasting delayed from America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Donald Trump tries to chuck a few bucks. We'll rank the presidential races. <laughs> and George Santos files a lawsuit against Jimmy Kimmel for aggravated irony, I'm pretty sure. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, big Orlando trip mm-hmm. coming right up. Y'all excited for Disney World? Well, I'm I'm not going to Disney World while I'm there, uh, and, and I am excited about that, so yes, I guess I am. <laughs> same, <laughs> same, me too. Nice. Okay, look, someday my son will become cognizant of the things I've said on the internet, and the least I can do is butter him up with a Disney trip before yeah. that, okay? Right. I'm trying to... Right. So, Disney, groundwork here. so that everybody knows, Lucinda is going to Disney World with Max. So Hell yeah, she is. So she, and she is definitely looking forward to it. And Noah and Heath were invited. It's not yeah, like I was right, like, no, all right, see you, <laughs> nerds. <laughs> well, I was like, please don't invite me. And you were like, okay, I won't. Yeah, I respected fine. your wishes. Yeah. <laughs> in our lead story tonight, in Chuck Your Face News, Donald Trump has a sneaker. He has a sneaker <laughs> and he's selling it. <laughs> After a long series of... Business failures, including a vodka, gold coins with his stupid fucking face on them, steaks with, I'm assuming, ketchup pairings, a university (laughs) that was legally banned from using the word university, chocolate bars like a fucking fundraiser for a middle school band, a casino (laughs) empire that's mathematically impossible to lose at, yet somehow he lost at it, and of course... NFTs of Trump as a superhero that lost 60% of their value within a day of being released. With all that business experience, it was time to get into the shoe game. So he showed up at SneakerCon in Philadelphia to peddle his latest wares. They're called the Never Surrender High Top Sneaker. Oh, fuck you. (laughs) Sure, Sure are, and yep, fuck you indeed. They're the worst possible they are. sneaker. They are. The worst yep. possible. Like, like, for real, if you asked me a month ago before all this happened to describe the worst possible sneaker, I'd be like, okay, uh, spray painted gold because that's mm-hmm. obnoxious. Uh, big American flag on them. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump's name. Yes. And that's exactly what they did. And a big T. I also, I also want to point out that he's now physically surrendered to multiple authorities in multiple jurisdictions. Right, like, like of all the major politicians in pretty much American history, I think he's surrendered the most, right, outside of the Civil War, right? And in terms of figuratively surrendering, a former president is hawking shoes at sneaker con. So there's yeah. also that. <laughs> yep. So Trump came out on stage at <laughs> sneaker con where it appears he encountered a sneaker for the very first yes. time in his life. <laughs> And became visibly confused about what he had. He tries to hold it, put a little shot of him holding sneakers very confusedly. And then eventually he announces the new shoes. Yeah. Okay. Just want to point out that people freak out about favoritism and politics when Obama says his favorite books of the year on Instagram. <laughs> right. Yes. Is there a standard <laughs> higher than double that we can start saying we're being yeah, applied? A lot of numbers above that one. Yeah. So... <laughs> I uh, I checked out his new sneaker site, and it's so very sad. First of all, you can't actually buy anything. Nope. You can only pre-order. Yeah. <laughs> you have to front him the money like a last resort pot dealer who just leaves for three hours and hope <laughs> he comes back with something while you're sitting there. Mm-hmm. Except instead of three hours, you have to wait until fucking July. That's when they allegedly start shipping. But the most terrifying part was another new product on that site he's also selling a cologne oh donald trump is selling donald the last person i would ever want to associate with 
a fragrance of any sort. <laughs> He's selling a cologne. It's called Victory 47, and it comes in a bottle with Trump's head on it. Yep. And they, they, <laughs> they tried to make one of those black and white shots of a model that you see for cologne ads usually, except they used Donald Trump as the model. And he's just staring into the camera with his resting, just smelled my own fart face that he has, <laughs> yeah. hoping to sell you again a fragrance. It's $99 for the yeah. Trump clone. This is the official press photo and he's very clearly sitting on an airplane to go somewhere and he did not put his phone down. Nope. He was like, hey, <laughs> should I not be on a cell phone call taking a very real, very unfortunate legal call during this photo shoot? <laughs> and the guy was like, doesn't fucking matter, man. Click. Great. I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Nobody cares. We got it. There we go. All right. So leave now, please. You know this started when an aide said clown shoes louder than he meant to under his breath and then he had to pretend he had said cologne. Oh, cologne mm. in shoes is what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So the limited edition Trump sneakers sold out their entire initial offering of a thousand pairs on the first day for a price of $400 each. Mm, so they're not... You know, sending those to the people yet, but that's that's what happened. So now he just needs to come back to SneakerCon and do the exact same thing for approximately 885 more years. <laughs> and he, um, well, then he still won't be able to pay off the $354 million judgment against him that came down the day before his big sneaker drop. Yeah. Yeah, and which is only one of the more than seven-figure judgments against him right now, so that's nice. Sure. A yeah. lot of big numbers piling up for Donald Trump. Speaking of factors, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Factor. All right, here we go. Down the hatch without a scratch. Okay, stop saying that. Doesn't help. Hey, guys, have you seen... Oh, my God, what, what are those? Oh, these? These are our meal replacement smoothies. Okay, I know I say this a lot, but those look terrible. Yeah, we're trying to save some time cooking by just kind of blending up everything we're going to eat today and downing it. Ugh, why did I choose Lucky Charms for breakfast on pasta night? Hey, okay, that's genuinely revolting. But guys, why don't you just try Factor? What's Factor? Factors delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. Noah, that sounds great, but we're trying to save time here. Well, fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat in just two minutes wherever you are. Wow. Two minutes is faster than it took to blend all this stuff. Especially the popcorn. Popcorn? I'm going to go to the movies. Anyways, where can I sign up? Head to factormeals.com slash skeptocrat50 and use the code skeptocrat50 to get 50% off. That's code skeptocrat50 at factormeals.com slash skeptocrat50 to get 50% off. All right. Thanks, Noah. I guess we won't need these. Are those little pieces of rubber? Yeah, we were going to go for a jog, too. They're, so those are shoes? Yep, shoes. And we're back. Next up in headlines in In Soviet Russia, Agent Doubles You News. If you have Republican family members, or just a family member or friend who's a fucking idiot, you've probably heard that in 2020, a well-trusted informant within Russia... Alexander Smirnov, see, my opening pun works two ways, provided oh, his handlers, it. thank you, he provided his handlers powerful evidence that the oligarch owner of the Ukrainian energy company Burisma had arranged to pay $5 million in bribes to both President Biden and his son Hunter. This, of course, led to the attempted impeachment of Joe Biden, which, while unsuccessful, is a damning condemnation of the Bidens. But of course, None of that is true. The Bidens did not receive $5 million in bribes, and this week, Mr. Smirnov was indicted on charges that he lied to investigators. Prosecutors working for David Weiss, the special counsel investigating Hunter Biden, described Mr. Smirnov in their court filings as a serial liar who could not even be trusted to describe honestly his own occupation or account for his finances. 
Okay, and all the people who blindly repeated a serial liar, they're all doing big public apologies, like Super oh, Detroit yeah. right now. Resigning from Congress in disgrace because yeah, there's a bunch right, of Congress right. people involved in that. Apologizing to any movie reviewers on any podcast that had to watch movies about this bullshit. Yeah, there's something <laughs> like that. Yeah, a whole goddamn political party is now under the influence of a nefarious Russian agent. I never thought I'd say, where's Joe McCarthy when you need him? But here we are. <laughs> But do we have any decency, though? I feel like now it's an attendance-taking <laughs> measure. Let's, let's get Melissa McCarthy to just fuck with just another sure. red, red Republican. Yeah, sure. Red let's scare. get her in let's there. Let's do it. Red state scare. Now, yeah. <laughs> I read about this story in the New York Times, and they posit a little chestnut that I think the experts here at the Skeptocrat might be able to crack open. Quote, how Mr. Smirnoff managed to convince business partners, law enforcement agencies, and politicians that he had something of value to offer remains as much of an enigma as the man now at the center of the saga, end quote. Okay, is it an enigma? It seems pretty clear to me. He obviously gave Hunter Biden all that crack and that sweet laptop so Hunter could make a bunch of crack doing selfie videos and then, you know, bing, bang, boom, profit <laughs> Everyone, yeah, right? so I, I, I'm Clear. sorry. Is the New York Times trying to say that Smirnov is not remotely enigmatic? Right. Yes. Exa- no, it's not. It's not in any way an enigma, mystery, or stage name for any other rapey looking magician. Right. <laughs> it is incredibly, overwhelmingly obvious why he was able to do this. This dude was paid by the Russians to weaken us politically by feeding our government false information again, and half the country fell for it. Again, because at this point, a goldfish observing American politics would be disappointed in us. <laughs> yeah, and as to how he pulled it off, it's amazing what people will accept when they don't give a fuck if it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lest we think, oh no, I might have made a mistake fucking eight years ago is where we're at yeah, right now. right, yeah. So, yeah, as I mentioned at the top, uh, Smirnov is now facing charges and throughout the course of the trial, just to exactly fed him this bullshit and why will become painfully obvious to the people who are still paying attention. Your Uncle Frank and your niece Moonshine will have long moved on to the next bullshit they think upholds their worldview and we'll start printing you should have voted for blank t-shirts just to save us the printing of a different name in the next four years. Yeah, I don't want to keep doing new shirts. Uh, no, so now we're and we're back. Now, yeah, <laughs> thank you. And in the dudes of Biden news tonight. Wake up, hon. The new all-time rankings of presidents just dropped, and to nobody's surprise, Donald Trump ranks 46th out of 46. In fact, I'm pretty sure there was an argument about whether they could drop him down to 56 with the ironclad assurance that at least the next 10 presidents will also be better than him. Uh, but presumably <laughs> prompted by the historical folly in all statements that begin with the American electorate can't possibly be stupid enough to, they elected to keep him at 46. Yeah, as long as we keep him from being 47, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw an ad during the Super Bowl. I think the corpse of JFK might be running too. <laughs> so that's cool, right? Like Biden, JFK corpse, whatever the fuck works. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure off. JFK's Tough corpse choice. rank higher on the list. So, <laughs> yeah, so this report comes to us from political scientists Justin Vaughn and Brandon Rottinghouse and is intended as a follow-up to similar rankings of presidential greatness released in 2015 and 2018. But it's not like the two of them just sat around rearranging their presidential collector's cards. They consider the responses of over 150 historians and political scientists who are asked to rate all of the U.S. presidents on a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 equals complete failure, 50 is average, and 100 equals greatness. Just David Parton desperately trying to throw off the curve, and they're like, we said historians, David. We said historians. (laughs) Put away the laminator, bud. It's not an ID card. That's not how you get into the historian club. Now, like I said, this is a follow-up to the rankings from 2015 and 2018, which means it's Biden's debut on the list. And he managed a pretty respectable 14th, putting him firmly among the top third of U.S. presidents, just ahead of Woodrow Wilson, just behind John Adams. And the guys who put the study together freely admit that he gets most of his points from not being Trump. Quote, Biden's most important (laughs) achievements may be that he rescued the presidency from Trump, resumed a more traditional style of presidential leadership, and is gearing up to keep the office out of his predecessor's hands this fall, end quote. 
Yeah, it's like how anybody who uses the bathroom after me holds the day's record for the least diarrhea. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. but, but more importantly, they get like heroic hazmat bonus points to bump them up the rankings of people who shat. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. That is more, much more like that. Yeah. So to, to nobody's surprise, Abe Lincoln maintains the top spot, though in a bit of an unexpected shakeup. George Washington did get knocked down to third place behind America's most socialist president, FDR. Uh, the award for most improved goes to Biden's former boss, Barack Obama, who's moved up nine spaces since his first ranking. He's now ranked at number seven, moving him he- ahead of Eisenhower, LBJ and Kennedy, among others. Uh, and of course, among the biggest drops are Woodrow Wilson, Ronald Reagan and Andrew Jackson, all of whom plummeted at least five places and all because they're racist pieces of shit. Okay, but, like, they didn't get more racist since 2015. What gives? Mm. I call shenanigans. <laughs> well, the American Political Science Association got less Exactly, racist, yes. Which is good, but I would have loved it if they didn't have that much space to improve. Or, and, and, right? and so much, they left them so much more space to still improve. All three of those oh, assholes yeah. are still in the top half. Lots Ooh. of work to do you yeah. don't love to at see that it. association and in American politics, yes. So it's worth emphasizing, too, just how bad Trump has to be to reach the bottom of this list, right? Like he is, Andrew Jackson. Yeah, right. No, look, he is five spaces below the guy who caught fatal pneumonia during his inaugural address, right? Just dying ranks five <laughs> spaces better than Donald Trump. The, the, I like presidents who didn't die of yeah. pneumonia during their inaugural <laughs> well, address. Well, I, I don't know. There's, there are Apparently some. Apparently we do. Yeah. We like presidents that do die. <laughs> yeah. So th- look, the guys just above him are the guy whose leadership was so bad that it was followed by the Civil War and the guy who stepped in after Abe's assassination and decided that black people had it plenty good enough in the South. That guy, Andrew fucking Johnson, scored an average of 21 point five six on this hundred scale trump scored less than half of that where are these points coming from yeah right yeah really so unless something unforeseen happens in the next few months our choice in november will be between a b-minus president and the literal worst president in american history by a substantial margin and as near as the polls can tell it's still a bit of a toss-up at this point <sighs> Yeah, and and speaking of us being doomed, it's time for a word from our other sponsor this week, Trust and Will. Hi, sorry, is is anyone in here? Well, hey there, friend Larry Law from Larry's Law Firm and Pizza. How can I help you? Did you get hurt in a bus accident? I can get you a lot of money if you got hurt in a bus accident. No, no, uh, I recently found love and therefore need to kind of set stuff in order. In case something happens to me, like my uh, final wishes, something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't know anything about that, but you know about trust and will? Oh, what's trust and will? Well, with trust and will, you can create and manage a custom estate plan starting at just $199. Trust and will has made estate planning accessible and affordable. Their simple step by step process guides you from start to finish with ease. Save loved ones time and stress by having all your documents in one place with bank level encryption. Wait. Can I gain security of my assets and peace of mind for me and my loved ones online? You sure can. I used Trust and Will for me and Anna when they first became a sponsor, and it was so easy and affordable that I immediately helped my mom to use it as well. That's why I, Eli Posnick, personally endorse Trust and Will. Hold on, Eli, what are you doing here? I'm going to jump. I mean, I had bus questions. Sure. Um, well... Regardless, where do I sign up? Well, you can secure your assets and protect your loved ones with trust and will. Get 10% off plus free shipping on your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. All right, guys. Thanks. Ooh, can I wear one of those big neck braces in court? Ixnay on the Ort cave, man. Oh, no, Heath's cool. I'm, I'm definitely cool. I'll push him in front of the bus if you want. Okay. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in Spurious George News, we have two pieces of delightful news about former Congressman George Santos. Actually, three. First of all, the word former just now. Mm. That continues being one. (laughs) Delightful item number two is the victory by Democrat Tom Suozzi earlier this month to fill the open seat left by Santos. And delightful item number three, Jimmy Kimmel made George Santos look stupid in a... 
very amusing way. And now Santos is suing Kimmel for fraud. Just, just going to say that one more time. George Santos is suing somebody else yeah. for fraud. I, I, I'm surprised it's even a person who really exists, right? Yeah, or, or not him in a mustache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> and a big thanks to Nick for the link. Skeptocratnews at gmail.com if you want to help out. So here's how the lawsuit happened. Jimmy Kimmel's writing team noticed that George Santos was making money on Cameo doing sad little videos like Kevin Sorbo. So they opened up profiles with made up names and started sending an escalating series of absurd requests for videos. And Santos is an idiot who needs the money, so he accepted. And Kimmel started airing the videos on a segment called Will Santos Say It? The answer was (laughs) yes, every time he will say it. And the fact that George Santos had no idea he was being pranked is amazing and ridiculous. Here's just a few examples of the video requests that were happily granted by Santos. One of them said, please congratulate my mom on the successful cloning of her beloved Schnauzer Adolf. Send a video back for that. All right, leave it to Jimmy Kimmel to have a bit this good and then execute it that poorly. Okay, so I'm sorry, if we made an internal (laughs) list of things to make George Santos say, this one would be embarrassed to raise its hand. Thank you. Do you guys think opposing counsel is considering it for a confession? Right? Someone at the state house has said, like, it's 50 bucks to try, and I feel like we should try. Yeah. I think it's like 500, and they're, they're doing a bunch. They're trying a bunch, for sure. Getting him to say things that are close to confessions, maybe, yeah, that yeah. they could patch together. I don't know. Figure it out, guys. Another one of the requests said, please congratulate my friend Gary for winning a beef eating contest. He ate almost six pounds of loose ground beef in under 30 minutes. He's not feeling great right now. Please wish him a speedy recovery. And here's my favorite, which may or may not have personal significance to me. It said, hey, George, my friend Heath just came out as a furry, and I'd love for you to tell him that his friends and family all accept him. His fursona is a platypus mixed with a beaver. He calls it beavapus. Can you say, <laughs> we all love you, Beavapus? He also just got the go-ahead from Arby's to go to work in the outfit. Could you also do a loud yif, yif, yif? That's the sound Beavapus makes as Beavapus. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, that's that, that, that one is pretty solid. I'm impressed. I'm so good. I, I thought that was just a joke you wrote for our podcast. <laughs> someone did, no. did someone do that for you? Is the... <laughs> Maybe. A- anyways, like uh, what I, I can't know. Say pending a court case. What I know now is what you're going to be on the next season to your D minus at least. So okay, that makes sense. Beaver puss and boots. Well, apparently George Santos eventually heard about the segment on Gimmel, and he is furious about his reputation being ruined. I guess. <laughs> In the words of Jimmy Kimmel during a monologue last week, right after he got sued by George Santos, he said, if there's one thing that George Santos will not stand for, it's using a fake name under false pretenses. That was actually pretty funny by the Kimmel writers. So according to the lawsuit, quote, Kimmel openly admitted to deceiving the plaintiff under the guise of fandom. It also claims that Kimmel, quote, misrepresented himself and his motives to induce plaintiff to create personalized videos for the sole purpose of capitalizing on and ridiculing plaintiff's gregarious personality. <laughs> That's two purposes and also stupid. <laughs> Kimmel not only boasted about intentionally deceiving plaintiff, but played on the comedic irony of possibly getting sued by plaintiff for fraud, claiming well, that it would be a dream come true. Huh? End quote from the dream come true lawsuit that they filed how do you not hear it when you're the one saying it um but okay but <laughs> but for real these guys if say on the off chance that santos wins this i feel like we should have a plan in place to move to venezuela at a moment sure <laughs> yeah cover right. ourselves yeah <laughs> maybe maybe we can run ourselves real fast into the clooney verse sure liked, yeah yeah like yep. flashed it. all right bad clooney <laughs> so according to the license agreement on cameo you're actually not allowed to broadcast the videos you get on national television, which means Kimmel did break some rules, but also seems fully aware of that mm-hmm. and chose to do it on purpose. Santos is seeking $750,000 plus other damages to be determined in court. So we'll see how it goes. I might even watch Jimmy Kimmel. Mm. And 
Hunt in coyote up news. I am maligned many ways here at Puzzle in a Thunderstorm. How are you? My tastes are questioned. My diet is mocked. But perhaps worst of all, when I posited the completely reasonable position that I could defeat a bear in hand-to-hand combat, I was told that I was wrong. Well, as skeptics, it's important to admit when I'm correct. And there is evidence for my side. As this week, we got some when a hiker in Rhode Island managed to kill a coyote, basically the bear of dogs, with (laughs) his bare hands. Okay, coyotes are dogs, which means they're great and adorable, and I pray they get revenge on this evil human being. Team Coyote, official. Okay, so wolves are the bears of dogs, but I've told you this before, Eli. You're allowed to test this theory anytime you want. This is a tontine, so (laughs) you fight that bear. So before we indulge, uh, so according to the story, this coyote had actually already attacked a dog walker the previous week, and it came at our hiker this past Friday. Our hiker was able to use his sweet ninja skills to subdue the beast. But how, you ask? By getting in its guard. The exact strategy <laughs> I described. Pause here for apologies. I, I'm sorry, listeners. Two other things about this story. <laughs> One. I, I just love the Associated Press because they felt the need in this story to point out that another guy strangled a coyote in 2020. Just obviously a listener to our podcast. And two, the coyote did in fact have rabies. Now, our hiker is receiving medical treatment, so hopefully they'll turn out okay. But the moral of the story was that I was right. I could in fact defeat a bear in hand-to-hand combat. And anyone who said otherwise is looking pretty silly on our podcast Mm. right now. What are you doing? What are you, the puppy bull doing a story about a dead dog? <laughs> it's not a dog, Fuck. it's a coyote. They're the bear of dogs. They're, they're the dog bear. They're bear not dogs. Even the bear of dogs. Well, this story may or may not appear in the show. Speaking of which, we're going to take a quick break for a sketch that may or may not make sense if the story was there or not. We'll see. <laughs> hey, Greg, do you have a second? Sure, Steve. Yeah, what's up? Uh, did you do the titles for the puppy bull? The puppy bull. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was me. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I thought so. So I was just online looking at some of the feedback. Um, Did you put a title into the puppy bowl telling the viewers that one of the puppies died? Oh, yeah. The little one died. Uh-huh. Yeah. Why did you do that? I don't know. I thought it'd be, uh, thought it'd be nice, right? You... you you thought it would be nice to tell people that one of the puppies in the puppy bowl died? Yeah, like as a tribute. This isn't the, the Oscars, Greg. We don't need an in memoriam page. Do you know who watches the puppy bowl? I don't know. People during the commercials? Kids! Greg, kids watch the puppy bowl, and now you told a bunch of them that one of the puppies died. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. I, be- I bet you bet your ass you're sorry. Now, come on. You're, you're making a statement. I'm just a titles guy. I can't. Yeah, well, you should have thought of that before you killed a puppy during the Super Bowl. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking on CNN in 15. I didn't kill the puppy, me. 15. Me. Got it. 15. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Are We Sure It's Not Trying to Moon Us News? Maybe it's that the moon is sideways and upside down, and these landers are oriented just fine. It's either that, or I have a second Moonlander disobeying its This Side Up sticker story for you in the last three episodes, because shortly after Intuitive Machines' Odysseus Lander became the first private spacecraft to successfully touch down on the moon, uh, the motherfucker laid down for a nap. The company assures us that it's still in good shape and capable of continuing its mission. It's just going to look stupid while doing so. Its pants are around its ankles? Why do we put pants on it, everybody? (laughs) You got a Dorito embedded in your neck there, (laughs) Lander buddy. Now, honestly, I have to tip my hat to the comic timing of this moon lander because the whole landing was fraught with peril. See, just before they were ready to land it, they realized that the laser range finders weren't working, so they couldn't calculate the correct altitude and velocity data that they would need to touch down safely. But it turns out that among its payload was a NASA instrument called the Navigational Doppler LiDAR for Precise Velocity and Range Sensing, 
right? Which might as well be called the official thing you need when your laser range fighter shorts out on you. Good old nittle pivers. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> they call it the NDL. They so cheated on that one. Yeah. Cheaters. Um, but the thing about the problem with the nittle pivers is that it was inside the spaceship still in its box and shit. Regardless, they were able to press that device into a completely unexpected application, and a harrowing descent later, it touched down. There was uproarious celebration at Mission Control, backs were padded, highs were five, champagne was uncorked, and then, with fucking Chaplin-esque timing, the motherfucker tipped over. What do you mean you (laughs) fist-bumped the thruster button, Mitch? (laughs) I I went for a high-five with Dave, and he looked away. I panicked because nobody was going to do a high-five with Dave. (laughs) Now, of course, uh, this is the moon, so tipping over is nowhere near as calamitous as it would have been on the Earth's surface. It sort of just gently laid down like it was exhausted from the seven-day journey. Uh, Intuitive Machines is still analyzing the data at the time of this writing, but the official excuse at the moment is that instead of being horizontally stationary uh, with respect to the lunar surface— like it should have been, it was actually drifting along at about six miles per hour while it was landing. Um, Some of the landing gear scraped across an uneven patch of the ground. The thing topples over. And while that's probably true, I have to be at least a little skeptical based just on how incredibly tip overable this whole goddamn design is. It's so top heavy. It looks like a telephone booth got scared of a mouse and jumped up on a chair. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Galactus's kid tried to make a diorama of his head for home act. <laughs> and then it stepped on a rake and KO'd yes. itself somehow. Yeah. Well, it's not quite KO'd. There, there is some kind of camera in this thing, and assuming that they can deploy it, we'll eventually get some pictures of it. Uh, but we're not exactly sure how it's oriented. Uh, we just we, we know it isn't up, right? Um, regardless, it's still a pretty impressive accomplishment given the fate of the last effort to land a private spacecraft on the moon. Um, this marks not just the first time a private company has succeeded at that, but also the first time the U.S. has successfully landed something on the moon since 1972. And despite what Eli would have you believe, that's before even me. Okay. I don't know if you're saying I think you're old or I don't believe in the moon landing, but yes. (laughs) Yes is the answer to that question. No, so I I should point out, too, that this lander was launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, and it carried six NASA instruments along with six private payloads. Uh, And a lot of people are hailing this as a great example of the new era of private enterprise leading the way in space travel. Um, Nope. Yeah, I think it's worth pumping the brakes here because the government money still basically paid for this endeavor. And government money subsidized the development of everything SpaceX has ever done. Exactly. It's like saying AOL invented the internet with a 50 free hour CD. No, right. we needed decades of organized <laughs> projects for them to exist right. at all. So, yeah, we, what we've actually done is we've added a profit margin to the money that we'd otherwise have spent to get these six instruments to the moon and given at least some of it to the crazy guy that killed Twitter for making fun of him. So, you know, some bad, some good at best. <laughs> <laughs> right. And given Elon Musk's PR policy, he's probably now libeling the lander from inside a bathroom stall while his lawyers try to break in with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and finally tonight, we couldn't possibly wrap up the show without a quick mention of my latest Google alert for Mike Lindell failure. Mm. Thanks to Nick as well for sending a link. So just in case anyone's not familiar, here's the backstory. Following the 2020 election, Mike Lindell claimed to have a big trove of internet packet data proving that Trump actually won. So Lindell issued a public bet. He called it the Prove Mike Wrong Challenge, offering $5 million to anyone who could prove that he wasn't holding incriminating packet data about the election being rigged. Some guy looked at the data and proved very easily that it wasn't even packet data at all, let alone packet data that showed any election fraud. It wasn't even data. No. It was just a jumble of letters and numbers, which means there's a hero out there who just like button mashed a really big Word document and sold it to Mike Lindell. <laughs> you know? Some kind yes. of spy movie scenario with like a big briefcase reveal in a warehouse for no reason. It's I'm- great. I bet Russians use our country as a training exercise at this point, right? Like yeah. The- <laughs> it's just, they're just kicking back with their vodka and their borscht going, I can't believe we had to go to spy school for this shit. Why? why? <laughs> Such a waste. Yeah, they said so- it was going to be super hard out there. This is not hard. <laughs> so naturally, Lindell refused to pay the guy because he reneges on everything. But then it went to arbitration and... Everyone on the panel was like, wow, that was dumb, Mike. Super dumb. You clearly owe the guy $5 million. So from there, 
Lindell, I guess, pawned a pillow warehouse to pay some more legal fees, and he appealed the arbitration in federal court. Well, we just got the ruling. The judge started by doing a quick roast of the contract that Lindell wrote as a bet against himself that had no upside, saying, approximate quote, the wording of this contract is insane, it's almost <laughs> meaningless, but I'm still not overruling the arbitration panel. And the judge ordered Lindell to pay the $5 million plus interest within the next 30 days. Ooh. So just to be clear, the legal argument they might have considered was, but I wrote my contract so stupid it can't possibly be binding. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. They tried. Yeah, you know, they tell him it's not a valid contract. He's like, oh, is it uh, by any chance packet data? <laughs> <laughs> Well, still didn't work. So in response to the ruling, Lindell claimed he's going to make another appeal. And he said, this guy doesn't have a dime coming. And that might be true, but not because of the appeal, uh, more because Lindell doesn't have any dimes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right, yeah. He's already millions of dollars behind in just legal fees, and he's running out of warehouses to pawn. So it's not clear how he's going to keep fighting legal battles. Speaking of which... The $5 million is just a drop in the bucket compared to the $1.3 billion defamation lawsuit against Lindell by Dominion and Smartmatic. But I'm not going to let his enormous bucket of failure ruin the good news about the smaller buckets of failure. That's right, good stuff, yeah, too. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Here's hoping he gets the Alex Jones treatment and the court starts liquidating all his property, including the, uh, I'm assuming, pillow fort where he currently lives. And, Mike, here's the thing. If you need some money, and we know you need some money, I will personally pay you a good deal if you pillow fight me on a live stream. Give us a call. <laughs> right, but you get to use a real pillow. He has to use a... He has a to my pillow, pillow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can make it a threesome with George Santos. I mean, it depends on the patrons, but like, let's, let's, let's throw it out there. <laughs> we'll check, check with him on Cameo. Maybe they'll send yeah. us a video of his part of a pillow fight. I don't know. All right, on that note... We're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous donors who will be personally thanked next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. More like Phil Less. Got him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Millard. I don't understand my character in this sketch. Why am I murdering you? So I don't know if you guys saw this, but during the puppy bowl, right at the end, they were like, hey, just so you know, this puppy died. <laughs> what? No, why am I murdering you in the, <laughs> in the Trust and Will ad? Oh, it's just because shenanigans? They very much create a narrative where Sweet Pea is the main character of this year's Puppy Bowl. And they were like, and before we let you go, Sweet Pea is in the void. Just yes. to remind you. Oh, no. There's no Sweet Pea anymore. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Looking for some easy ways to save energy this winter? Wait, what? Caulk and weather strip air leaks to keep heat in. Oh, I can do that. Set your ceiling fan to rotate clockwise. You'll stay warmer and save energy. Oh, I can do that. Close up your fireplace damper and save energy all season long. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Now I can do that. Get more tips from Toledo Edison at EnergySaveOhio.com. 